Howard Yu is joining us. He is the IMD um, Business School Lego Professor of Management and Innovation. And Howard, it's great to see you. When you look at those, when you look at those Amazon numbers, particularly on the back of Meta and some of the other tech uh, numbers we've gotten, Alphabet, for example, how does sort of Amazon fit into the tech the tech story this week? Right. I mean, the tech sector this week has been crazy, but it also illustrate the or highlight the importance, even for tech giant, is so important to become future ready. So what we're seeing is, of course, Amazon have this one time boost because of the IPO Ravian, but it's also the revenue growth because of the pandemic. And on the back is the continuous growth of AWS and also the pricing hike in terms of prime membership. I think it's all these four factors really turn the market to be bullish. But look again, um, earning is the ultimate lagging indicator for tech giants. Um, the moment they stop innovating, the moment they stop branching out to new businesses, then and ultimately, they would be corner, and there's no future growth. And this is where the matter story beginning to emerge. So I think from Amazon perspective, they are looking left and right to looking at what happened to Netflix, what happened to matter. And so that in the future going forward, it's not just about margin growth, but more importantly, is to branch out to new services, new business model. This is how Amazon has been on the rise for a long time. Howard, out of all the tech giants you just mentioned, and given we've, we've gotten a lot of uh, negative and some positive stock reactions here, a lot of earnings calls, a lot of earnings releases, which tech giant do you see as the most innovative at this point in its life cycle? Right. So at IMD, we actually take a very balanced measure across companies, whether they're innovative or not. We're looking at the cash position, like Julie had mentioned earlier. Um, it's so important that companies actually are in a good standing in terms of financial position so that they can invest in the future. But you also kind of need to looking at the board diversity. Do they have a diversity of thoughts around the leadership teams? And what's interesting about Amazon is the CEO, Andy, is sort of the ultimate outside insider we can call, that he never run the major mainstream business, the Amazon.com. He grew up from the AWS sort of ecosystem. And this is where he has the insider knowledge to push Amazon to new height potentially, but also at the same time, is not too much drinking the Kool-Aid of the organization. So 30 years of research have been shown that outside insider perspective is the best predictor in terms of CEO succession performance. But as I was looking across, I, I think Google is pretty good uh, around that. Despite Apple's changes in privacy setting, they continue to able to really getting close to the end consumer, unlike Matter or unlike Snap. Um, and Amazon is really around its ability to branch out to new business area, right? And and followed by perhaps would be Microsoft. You're looking at the Xbox on what they've done with the changing of the gaming sector in terms of subscription model and acquiring different friends. Franchises. So these are the leading indicators that suggest which tech giant actually are future ready. I also wanted to ask you, you know, if you have that sort of inside outside perspective, does it also help you with awareness of how your company is perceived in the public and by your consumers? And you did some really interesting research where you looked at sentiment towards large cap tech and found that it's even worse than big banks right now, which I thought was really interesting. So talk me through that research and what it means for how these companies should manage themselves. Right. Remember a few years ago, people really felt like the biggest villain of our economy is the big banks. And what we've done at IMD is we take on all these, you know, publicly available information and fed to an algo to understand what is the public sentiment. And turns out to be the case, you know, the negative sentiment around tech giant is increasing more and more negative to the point that, you know, they eclipse the negativity of big banks. So it really is big tech becoming, you know, the biggest, you know, displeaser for our society. Now, why does it matter? Because I think innovation really requires likability of the general public. I mean, you're looking at matter, right? They try cryptocurrency, but Mark Zuckerberg couldn't pull it off because all the regulators around the world do not trust them. And so I think this is in part where having a CEO can really navigate that 
ranging from geopolitics to likability in the general public becomes key. And being a good listener rather than just saying, I have growth, so any scandal couldn't touch me. Instead, having a more humble stand and actively seek out negative opinion and ratify those become really important. It's almost like a license to operate. So I think AWS is interesting because in a way, for AWS to thrive, they must work with third party. Unlike Amazon.com, we oftentimes see they have predatory uh, practices. They launch their private brand to kill off the small time merchant. That type of narrative needs to be stopped. And Amazon needs to turn itself into a much more benign giant, if you will, if it were to succeed and continue to grow. Well, Howard, let's stay on that thread, uh, because uh, one can make the argument that Facebook uh, CEO and founder Mark Zuckerberg has become this polarizing figure in this country. Uh, as you look toward the company's next decade, is he the right person to be leading Facebook? Should he be more of an executive chairman type role where he can work on the metaverse, but get someone a little bit less controversial to, to lead the company operationally? It's very important for Facebook or Matter to have a reset, as you just point out, Brian. I mean, um, you know, personal reputation could last only so long. And when the public mind have a sort of a burnished image of someone, then, then it's very hard to revert that perception. And so I think it is in part why Mark uh, decided to become the chairman of the group so that he can really focus in on long term uh, investment and, and to nominate someone who have a much more hands on experience, perhaps to running the core business, which, by the way, the core product is also facing existential problem under threat by TikTok and losing touch with the younger generation, because previously they have been focusing on growth and growth alone. And so Facebook needs a reset in terms of its agenda. But like you described, I mean, I think Matter is really hitting the juncture right now. Um, they have no other chance but pull off Metaverse as we know it in order to generate a refresh uh, excitement among the financial market. Its core business is slowing. There are competitors coming in. They try to pull up crypto. It failed. And all is left is this one big bang of Metaverse, which, of course, Apple has initiative and many others have initiative. And so, which is why I see the great pressure on the matter to reinvent itself. They are on a burning platform. Stakes are high. Really great framing of all of this, Howard. It's great to catch up with you. Howard Yu, IMD Business School, Lego Professor of Management and Innovation. Thanks so much, Howard. Good to see you.